What's going on guys, this is Hunter back again with another dash design tutorial. Um, we've gotten a couple of requests for people looking for um, a tutorial on how to do a video overlay with the AEM data software. And so what the video overlay allows you to do is it allows you to overlay your data on top of a video for sharing um, either on social media or just for doing added analysis so you could see what was going on in car when certain inputs were happening so you can uh, so you can correlate the actual track position um, and what the driver was doing with uh, when certain conditions were occurring and this could be used for driver development or even failure analysis if you saw low oil pressure in a certain corner due to um, you know maybe a long long left hand corner where the oil was sloshing away from the pickup you could correlate that to maybe a, a baffling problem or something like that because you could see what's happening on track at the same time so let's jump right into this once we open up AEM data we're gonna go to file new project the benefit here is after creating this project, you can reuse it and then you can make the process much quicker as you go along. So we're gonna make a project for our video overlay. But before we do that, I just wanna point out that there is a help file here at the top of the AEM data window. Um, has tons of information on how to do um, certain things if you, uh, if you forget or just need a, need a quick tip. So for example, if we type in video, we can get information on how to do a video sync and then a quick on how to do the video overlay and we'll go into that here today. To get started on your project, you want to add a couple things. We're gonna first add a channels list. We will add a trace and we're going to add a video. So after we add our video window, the next thing we wanna do is import the log that we're working with and the, the video itself. So we'll go to file and I have my, uh, I have my log over here um, that I was working with recently. So I'll just go to recent log files. And this one was sent over from one of our racers, Tim Gray. And then we're going to add it to our current project. So you'll see the, uh, all of the channels populate here over in the channel list. The next thing we wanna do is we want to configure the video. So we'll select the video file now the video file here is going to be a one minute cut that our editor, Brendan, thank you, made. <clears throat> and it includes both the in-car and, uh, and the pass. So we import the video, okay. And then, uh, and then we're gonna overlay a couple channels here in the top that will help us determine um, the sync point. So the first channel that we're gonna wanna look at is the drive wheel speed because the drive wheel speed will obviously be increasing when the launch occurs. We're also going to be looking at look at engine speed. So we added in the, uh, the driven wheel speed and the engine speed here, um, and we'll zoom into that. And then we'll use this launch point as our sync point, because in the video, we'll be able to see Tim release the handbrake and launch, and we'll be able to time that exactly with, uh, with this point here in the data. To sync the video, we'll go over here to configure. We're gonna want to set the sync point one to the current log time and then we will adjust the video point to match that uh, that launch point. So we'll just go through the video here. We can see, uh, see in the video, Tim is staging the car after he just set up the burnout. Tim's on the handbrake there. And right, let's see, right there, see the light go green and the car begins to launch. So this is gonna be, uh, it might take a little bit more fine tuning, but that's gonna get us close. So if we set that as the sync point, press okay, and then we can, uh, we can play this back. Play. And right there. All right, let's, uh, let's watch that again just to confirm that we got our, our sync point correct. So we can play this through, confirm that that launch happened at the right point. It looks like we nailed it. The launch is now happening right when we start to see that driven wheel speed increase. After the video is synced, then we can go into adding some gauges and some, uh, some images on track for the actual data overlay. So by right clicking on the video, we can go to add gauge and we'll add a taco. Place that one 
right here. We'll add another gauge for vehicle speed. Now to configure these gauges, simply double click it, select the channel we want to reference, such as engine speed for this first one. And then we can do driven wheel speed for this next one. And then, uh, then we can do some configurations of the gauges. There's a couple settings here we can go through. So we could change the amount of major ticks. So in this case, we'll uh, change it to about eight, reduce the minor tick count a bit. Don't really need that much resolution. And then reduce the font size a little bit as well. So we'll get that, uh, get that gauge in there and then configure the engine speed. We'll reduce the major ticks by one, reduce the minor ticks by a couple, and then reduce the font size again. Let's see, we'll also reduce the multiplier um, so it appears more like a traditional tachometer. And uh, right there, so it's a multiplication of a thousand, you know, just like, uh, just like you'd see normally. All right, so we can set that one up. We can set some thresholds and some colors. We could change the needle color to blue. Uh, the taco face here is actually what would change the color. So if we wanted to, we could change it here to a little bit of a sunburst color. Now, depending on what space you have available will depend on, uh, on this layout. There's tons of different settings you can come in here and play with. You could even put a, put a custom gauge in by importing an image file. So once you have that set up and your gauges configured the way you want to see them, then the next step is going to be exporting the video. So by right clicking and starting the encoding process, that will allow you to save this video and the um, log itself. You'll, uh, you'll save the name, test one, save. We're going to do just the, uh, just do the, uh, the actual run itself. So I'll make a selection on the run of the video. If I back out from here, let's see, this is the point here that the video starts. Um, and then the video is about a minute long. So we'll drag a minute after that till about right there, the end of the track. When I go to right click, encode and export. And then on the drop down, we'll just pick the selection so that um, the rest of the data isn't used and we're just focusing on the video that we have. This also will, uh, by cutting down the time, will also reduce the render time substantially. And then we press OK. So something else you want to do after you have created your project here is you want to save that project so that you can use it again once you get everything configured um, how you like it. So you'll, be, you'll do that by going to File, Save Project. And we'll save this as video demo one, save. Now, let me uh, open up a project that was sent to us by one of our tuners, Randy at RS Tech. So we'll go to file, open project, and this is what he uses. This is what, uh, what Randy's created. So whenever he wants to do a video overlay, all of his gauges are in place. So all he has to do is import the log import the video, and then maybe tweak a couple gauges to suit his needs. Um, so here we have a slip mile per hour. This is referencing a math channel. So it's measuring the uh, slip between the driven wheels and non-driven wheels. He also has the front wheel speed and the rear wheel speed. We have the uh, intake air temp right here, injector duty cycle, um, then we also have a radar gauge config right here, you know, with the range set to 1.5, that's 1.5 Gs. And then uh, over here on the X, Y, and Z, we have the A cell X, Y, and Z from the vehicle dynamics module. So I can show you how quickly we can sync up a video here and get it exported. So we will um, find our video, our one minute cut, Press OK. As soon as I import the video, all the gauges are already on screen. In this case, what I would probably do, edit some of, uh, some of the gauges in this corner to better, so that I could better see what, uh, what Tim's doing in the car there. You know, I could see that being a, a slight issue, but very easily, you know, we could move these gauges out of the way. Once your gauges are configured, then 
like we showed previously. You can sync the video to a specific log point. So in this case, my log point will be the launch. The launch occurred at this point right here. So we'll sync the point to the current log position. And then all I need to do is sync my video with that point. So that's done by setting my cursor at a specific point in the log, clicking this button right here, and then I move my video slider to that point. So that's the, uh, that's the launch point. So I will sync my video to when Tim releases his handbrake. Let's back it up a little bit. Right there is when that occurs. All right, thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Please leave your comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe for future updates. All right, take care.